welcome back to the Jake Beckett Show podcast. I'm your host, Jake Beckett, back in the house for another great episode this week. Uh, this is the one that you've all been waiting for. I've gotten a lot of requests uh, over the past couple of weeks to do a comprehensive podcast on the State of the Union, really, on Razorback football. Um, as some of you all have seen on social media, I've been pretty active on Twitter the last few weeks. Um, I've given some uh, some pretty pointed criticism of the Razorback football program, and I want to get into uh, why I decided to do that, why I think it's necessary. Uh, just some, some background here. I'm recording this uh, after the uh, Arkansas football team just lost to Alabama, uh, dropping our fifth straight game uh, to fall to two and five on the season. So, I want to say something at the outset. Um, you know, this is everything that you're about to hear in this podcast is is my opinion, and everyone you know has different opinions. There's all kind of different ranges of, of fan opinions out there. Um, and you know, just a word of warning: you know, if you're someone who is easily triggered by criticism of the Razorback football program, um, you know, if you react impulsively and get really defensive and get angry. Uh, whenever someone uh, presents some uh, some intelligent, well thought out criticism of your favorite team, uh, I'm warning you right now. Trigger warning, disclaimer. Uh, you probably you should probably turn this off right now. Uh, you probably shouldn't listen to it. Uh, it might upset your delicate sensibilities. Um, you, you you're probably going to get offended. So you know, at, at the outset, I'm just warning you. Like you're going to hear some some hard truths. You know, some tough opinions that might contradict things that you believe or some things you haven't heard before. Um, but one thing that I do want to say, um, and I hope you consider this if you continue listening, um, you know, I, this is all based on all these opinions, everything that I have said on social media and everything that I'm saying in this, in this podcast and everything that I'll say in the future when it comes to football, you know, this is all based on my experience. You know, I, I played college football at a pretty high level. I played professional football at a pretty high level. Not that I have all the answers, not that everything I say is automatically true, but just take into consideration that I played this game uh, at a pretty elite level for a long time, um, and I did so around some of the greatest uh, football minds in, in the history of the game, some of the greatest coaches, some of the greatest players. So if you hear something you disagree with, you know, you might your initial response might be to get mad. Um, but I hope you just kind of think to yourself, well, um, you know, Jake has done this for a long time and he's been around some of the best. Maybe he knows, um, what he's talking about. Maybe he knows a little bit more than me about football. Maybe I should just shut up. Um, as coach Belichick would say, never miss an opportunity to shut the fuck up. Um, and you know, this is one of those times if you're a critic of the Arkansas football program and you get mad at what I say on Twitter, um, because it, it, uh, upsets your, your fan loyalties. Um, please just bear with me, uh, hear what I have to say. Um, and I promise it will be an educational experience. And even if you don't come around to my opinion, um, you know, I think you'll be more informed at the end of it. Um, so you know, that's, that's kind of what I want to say at the outset. Um, you know, and this is, again, another disclaimer. Like, I think a lot of people see what I've been saying on Twitter, and they think that I, I hate the Razorbacks, or I'm, I'm bitter, or, you know, I'm, I'm just, like, looking for attention. Like, no, like, this is everything that I've said and will say about the Arkansas football program is really, ultimately, it's optimistic. You know, I, I, I think that we can do better. Um, I, I, historically, if you look at the Arkansas football program, um, you know, we've, we've had some very good teams. Um, obviously it's been since 1964, um, that we've won a national championship, but obviously like during my, um, you know, last couple of years on the Hill, you know, we went 21 and five, we're consistently in the top 15. I think we finished my set, my, my senior year, like ranked number five in the country, it's doable. I mean, Arkansas can be relevant. We can be really good. Um, and, you know, I want to get into why I believe the NIL and transfer portal is the greatest opportunity for Arkansas football uh, in decades. 
Um, and so ultimately, just like th think about it that way, that everything that I'm saying, like I, this is not pessimistic. Ultimately, the criticism, if I thought the situation was hopeless, then I, I wouldn't care. Um, but, you know, I love the Hogs. You know, my grandpa played for the Hogs. My dad, my uncle, I played for the Hogs. I mean, if there's any greater Razorback fan than me, you know, like I, I'd be happy to have that argument. Um, but I love the Razorbacks, and I think we can do better. And really everything that I have to say that can be taken as critical, it's ultimately based in the belief that we can and should be better. So just kind of a brief outline of what I'm going to get into today. Um, you know, I'm going to start off with explaining kind of why I'm doing this. Um, I'm going to give some background on kind of how this all started, um, you know, with criticizing Sam Pittman. Um, and then I'm going to kind of get into where we go from here, the, the solutions that I see, the opportunities that we see, uh, especially relative to some other programs within the athletic department. Um, but that's, that's kind of the the generic outline. I'm not really sure how long I'm going to go today, but it's going to be, it's going to be a longer podcast. Um, and I'm definitely going to post this one on Twitter. So, so everyone can check it out on video. Um, and just a reminder, um, if you're on my podcast, check it out everywhere. You can see podcasts, uh, Apple, Spotify, uh, we're on YouTube, obviously for now, uh, give us a five-star review, subscribe to the podcast. It's really been blowing up. It's been great. Um, you know, I did some media last week, um, I've got some media coming up in the next two weeks um, to keep promoting it. Um, and I really love hearing from the fans and even the, the critics, the haters and losers. We all love that too. So uh, be sure to, to help support the podcast just by uh, liking and, uh, and giving us a five-star review and also telling your friends about it because that's how uh, we gain a wider audience. Um, so just to begin, so where did all this, where did all this start? I kind of got into why I'm doing this. I think the Arkansas football program can be better. Um, and everything, you know, it, this is all try to try to try to remind yourself that ultimately Jake's doing this because he thinks we can be better. OK, so how did all this start? So um, a few weeks, I guess it was September 16th. I attended the BYU game in person. Uh, I was there. Obviously, that game ended with the loss. That was our first loss of the season. Uh, dropped us to two and one. That's where the current five game losing streak started. And I, I was, you know, I don't listen to a lot of sports talk radio. Um, I have a lot of, obviously, family and friends who listen to it quite a bit, and they kind of tell me what's happening. But, you know, driving home from the game on that Saturday night, you know, I, I turned on the, the, uh, the, the sports talk radio, and, you know, we had just lost the game, you know, at the end there. Um, you know, we had a lead in the second half, maybe even the fourth quarter, uh, had a chance to tie the game at the end. You know, we committed like 14 or 15 penalties, way in the double digits, um, you know, just some just bad football, uh, again, as Coach Belichick would say, uh, and kind of gave the game away there to a team that we should have beaten at home in BYU. And I turned on the sports talk radio, and, you know, I was just appalled at what, what I heard. I mean, it was just, it was like Baghdad Bob level propaganda. Um, you know, you had Rainbow Rick Schaefer out there talking about silver linings and you know, how, you know, Arkansas was obviously the better team. And, you know, we like, like, you know, if you, I mean, he, there was even a line in there. He's like, you know, if you don't look at the scoreboard and you look at the stat sheet, you know, Arkansas, Arkansas dominated this football game, you know, and it's just like, you know, we just lost at home to a team we never should have lost to. And that was, that was the take was that Arkansas is really good. And that, you know, just a couple of minor mistakes and we would have won the game. You know, it was all very optimistic. It was talking about, you know, hey, we're about to start the SEC schedule. Anything is possible. And it was just like, it was, it was just disturbing. Like, like, I know that not everyone is as aggressive as I am when it comes to critiques. But, you know, that was my first time listening to sports talk radio in a while. And it just really struck me how just, um, you know, like ludicrously optimistic it all was. Um, and it wasn't realistic. And, you know, since a lot of Razorback fans don't have any other options, I started to, con started to consider, you know, hey, like, not that I had the biggest reach or the biggest voice or, you know, anyone listens to me. Like, that's not what this is about. It was just, I think people would, it, it would be interesting to put out my opinion out there, um, which was different than what I was reading and listening to and, and hearing and all this stuff on, you know, kind of traditional uh, Arkansas Razorback media uh, online and on the radio. Uh, and in the newspaper, and so I, I figured, like, hey, like, people need to hear the truth, or my opinion, as far as I see it, 
And so, you know, I decided to kind of go public with some things that I had been saying privately for a long time. So, and, and again, to set the stage on Pittman. So I believe Pittman deserves a lot of credit for bringing the program out of the abyss um, that was the Chad Morris era. I mean, um, you know, that was really rock bottom for the program historically, in my opinion. And, you know, Pittman came in as a former offensive line coach. He had never been a head coach before in his entire career. And really what his job was to do was to change the culture of the locker room. I mean, obviously there had been a culture problem, um, you know, losing is a cancer, as I always say. And, you know, it was obvious to me during the Chad Morris era um, that the players had accepted losing. You know, I saw like players taking pictures on the field after losing to like North Texas. And, you know, like, like it was just embarrassing stuff. Like, I mean, just about me, like when we, we finished five and seven, my redshirt freshman year in 2008. And even though we beat LSU in our last game, we were home for the holidays. We didn't qualify for a bowl game, um, just being a five win team, even though that was Petrino's first year. Like I didn't want to show my face anywhere in public because I was, I, I was pissed. I was angry that we had missed a bowl game. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I didn't want to listen to anyone. I didn't want to hear anything other than, you know, hey, I'm going to the weight room twice, twice a day. We're going to figure out how to change this team so that this never happens again. You know, we were not cheering on the, I mean, like, obviously it was nice to beat LSU at home to finish off the year, but like, ultimately that season was a failure. You know, we missed a bowl game and I don't care if it was Bobby's first year or what, um, that was the mentality. We, we were, we were angry. Losing was never acceptable. I've never been a part of a program. Not that I'm like the greatest football player of all time, but I've never been a part of a program where losing was acceptable. So that was, that was a foreign concept to me. And it was good to see Pittman, um, you know, bring a culture change and, you know, bring the program back to respectability. He did his job and he deserves our gratitude for that. But the bottom line is, is that what we are right now is not acceptable. Um, it was obviously a monster mistake to give Pittman a $25 million contract extension um, after he won nine games in his second year. Um, you know, I, I won't get too deep into this, but like, Obviously, Hunter Urishek, the athletic director, that was a boneheaded decision. Those those contracts, like I get it, like Pittman went to Jimmy Saxton, you know, there was some stuff behind the scenes, but like he had no leverage. Like the only reason you extend and raise a football coach is if there's a credible threat that he's going to go to a different program, a better program. And with Pittman then and now, there is no credible threat. Like he's like there's no other coach, there's no other team in the SEC or the SEC West, like maybe Vanderbilt, there's no other team in the conference that would trade their coach for Pittman either then or now. So he had no leverage. There was no reason to give him a $25 million contract extension. And I bring that up like, you know, it's it's money, but, you know, now people are, are they're already using the buyout from his new contract as a reason why we can't fire him at the end of this year, which is just compounding the mistake. So we'll get to all that, but like that, that's, you know, you can kind of see where this is going. So we lose the game to BYU, lose the game to LSU. You know, I started to put some stuff out there on social media. I see fans and I hear people, you know, on the, the Arkansas sports radio media, Arkansas, I, I call it the corrupt Arkansas sports media. They're talking about how, you know, Hey, we're, we're pretty good. We should have won these games. Um, you know, we're making improvements, silver linings, all that bull crap. And, you know, I say, Hey, like losing is never acceptable. Like, I don't care if you lost by one or a hundred, you know, losing is losing. And, you know, you don't want to be overly negative, but you also don't want to be unrealistic and say that, hey, we're doing good things. We're taking moral victories away from a loss. There's no such thing as a moral victory. There's just victories or losses. And right now we have five in a row of losses. So, you know, after the, after the LSU game, um, something very interesting happened. So, you know, I, I didn't see the press conference, um, but I, I, I saw that, um, you know, online that Sam Pittman had deleted his Twitter account. Okay. And like, okay, so there's like, and then he, he goes into this press conference. And before I get into that, like for, for a, a so for a, for a big time football program or any big time public figure, politician, football coach, whatever it is, celebrity, you know, there, there's two ways to handle it. Number one, you don't have Twitter at all, like, like Belichick or Saban or whatever. You just don't have any social media presence. That's fine. 
or you have a social media presence and no matter what happens you don't you don't make like news on social media like like you don't you don't like start subtweeting people you don't start twitter battles you certainly don't delete your twitter account in the middle of the season um, that's like, like the one thing you can't do. So like you, you, you either don't have it at all or you have it and just ignore it or use the, the hate and the outrage, you know, use that as bulletin board material to then fuel your team's performance. The one thing you can't do is show weakness, like deleting your Twitter account in the middle of the season. And so he gets asked about it and you know, he, he got kind of caught with his pants down and so he tries to spin the whole deleting his Twitter account into this like mental health awareness thing. I don't even know what to say it. He he's, he goes up there in his press conference and he talks about you know um, you know my players were getting were getting cyber bullied online. Um, they were really sad. Um, people were calling me fat online. Blah blah blah. And so I just deleted my Twitter account. And I'm looking out for the mental health of my players and coaches and myself. And, and like that was just patently absurd on its face, but Sam Pittman, um, you know, I, I called him online. He was a savvy operator because he had just lost two games in a row. He did an embarrassing thing, you know, deleting his Twitter account, and he had to turn it into like a positive story. And so he, he chose the mental health awareness route, knowing that the fans and the media would, would take the bait. They would fall for it hook, line, and sinker. And they did, you know, like when I started criticizing Pittman for deleting his Twitter account, I mean, you, you saw all this stuff. Like I was getting so much hate from these Arkansas sports media types and people, you know, just like randos on Twitter who were like, oh, like Jake, you're a, you know, you're a bad person. Like what you don't care about mental health. Um, you know, I had, you know, reporters in Arkansas, you know, coming at me, you know, like I said, like, hey, this guy got a $25 million contract and he can't take a little bit of Twitter heat. And I had reporters, you know, like Channel 5 up in Fayetteville being like, what, like, uh, you know, someone makes a certain amount of money and all of a sudden, like, they don't have feelings? Well, yeah, that's exactly right. Like, part of being a public figure, part of being a football coach, like one of the most prominent people in the state, you know, one of the wealthiest people in the state, is being able to take criticism from the cheap seats, from Twitter, from the media, from fans. Like that's part of the deal, and to 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 say that like, you know, I'm gonna delete my social media and I'm gonna call people out who are attacking me because like I'm concerned about everyone's mental health, that is so weak, and pathetic. And I pointed out like the players see that stuff and like, hey, our coach is like soft and weird, and I mean obviously that's I think that's played a factor in our our five game losing streak, unfortunately, and you know like the the hate kept coming like I mean, even like former players like. Brooks Ellis, you know, Brooks Ellis, who I've never met in my life, as far as I know. And Brooks Ellis, I mean, this, like, this, this guy had the gall. Like, he, he turned it into a military thing. He's like, Jake, like, you're a, you're a military veteran. Shouldn't you care more about, like, people's mental health? Like, essentially, this, this, this jackass who never served a day in his life, never wore the uniform, he's going to criticize me, an Army veteran, for, for being a bad veteran because I don't care about mental health in the way that he thinks that I should. I mean, like, what a, what an idiot. Like, what a moron. I mean, Brooks Ellis is an absolute dumbass. And to come after me, like, he got a, he got a bunch of blowback. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of veterans online I saw were, go, were going after him with good reason. I mean, he deserved it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that was just a taste. And, obviously, there were some of the just typical, um, you know, Twitter keyboard guys who were coming after me. But it was just it was just funny, like the level of vitriol that I got from saying that. I mean, obviously, I was over the target. Um, you know, I had touched the nerve, and you know, I think like people were expecting me to apologize, uh, which was also kind of hilarious. Like there was this one like fat guy, um, you know, who was in Arkansas sports media, who like he posted this clip from his I guess his radio show, and he was like, "Hey, like we're gonna give Jake an opportunity to come on the show." And, uh, and apologize. And, you know, we're, we're going to give you a chance, Jake, um, you know, to, to, to take a mulligan here, to, um, you know, to, to set the record straight, to explain yourself. I mean, first of all, dude, like, like I don't apologize to jackasses like you. Like, like this just fat, random, like, Arkansas sports media types who I've never met before, who I don't care about. 
there's like 10 people on this earth whose opinions I really value. Um, and you're not one of them. So like, that's really, you know, I believe what I believe, you know, I, I lay it all out there, good and bad. If you disagree, fine. Um, but like, it was really funny to see, like, you can see how social media works, especially in our hyper feminized culture. I mean, even men these days are adopting female social tactics because I guess it works. Like you, you try to shame people into apologizing and like emotionally manipulate them. But they realized, I think after about a week or so, that they didn't know who they were dealing with, and I was never going to apologize. Um, you know, I, I firmly believe what I'm saying, and like I thought that I was going to be proven right, and of course I was proven right. Like this team is, you know, led by someone who is emotionally soft, um, and that starts at the top. I mean, I always say like the most important guy in the room in a professional football team locker room is the is the quarterback. And the most important guy in the room in a college football program locker room is the head football coach. So if you've got the wrong head football coach, you know, your team is never going to succeed. And it was clear to me by the, I mean, obviously things have been kind of spiraling, but like obviously by the deleting his Twitter account in the middle of the season and trying to play the victim, that to me was kind of the last straw. And so I, I put my, my thoughts out there and, you know, here we are. Like that was after the BYU game or the LSU game. And we've lost five games in a row. So I, it, it seems like the Twitter hate has kind of died down. Um, you know, people have, have kind of grudgingly conceded that I was right. Um, you know, but we'll see. I, mean, I still get attacks. Mostly those are from people who are like lefties. You know, people who have like, uh, you know, pronouns in their bio or, you know, BLM flags, that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, they, they just, they, they never go away. So I think most people have come around to my football opinions. Um, and the people who are still attacking me are just kind of like, you know, random leftists who hate my politics. So, so that was, that was kind of that. Um, and so obviously like we have to get rid of Pittman. I think most people realize that now. I don't think that Hunter Juracek has the balls to make that move after this season. Um, you know, Pittman was his guy. He gave him a monster contract extension. Um, I think he'll probably give Pittman another year, but, and this is like, this is why I think that we have to get rid of Hunter Juracek as well. And before everyone gets mad, oh my gosh, like Hunter's great. Just remind, remember what I said at the beginning of this program. Like this is this is based on my experience, what I've seen. You know, you came at me over Pittman. I was proven right. And you know, before you come after me over Eurocheck, like maybe consider that I'm correct on that too. So, you know, the, the thing with Hunter, um, I've been upset with him for a while now because, um, you know, he is he is publicly bashing the NIL. And, you know, he was in this, like, media battle with uh, Jay Billis, the, the college basketball guy, over revenue sharing. And Hunter was essentially like, yeah, you know, um, we're not going to uh, revenue share with our players because we need that money to provide uh, mental health counseling and things of that nature. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on, like mental health stuff, uh, inside the Arkansas sports program. Like, there's something wrong there. Uh, obviously, this is why I'm saying we should fire everyone. But yeah, like, like what, a, what, a, what an idiotic argument that is. Like, we're not going to compensate our top talent because, like, we think we can spend that money better by, provi by providing mental health counselors. Like, are you serious? Like, even if you believe that, why would you say it publicly? Like, your job is to attract top talent to the program. And, and the, the way to do that now, like, and this is, we can kind of get into where I think we should go. Like, NIL and the transfer portal have changed the game. Like, college football that you think you knew is in the past. It's gone forever. Okay? Like, you are now buying players. That's why, I, like, this is like the NFL now. Like, you're buying players. Like, if your coach, if you know that you don't have the right coach, like, like back in the old days, like, if you fired your coach, you're like, well, we have to give the new guy three or four years so he can restart recruiting and, like, we'll give him some time. Like, those days are over. This is like the NFL where you have the draft and free agency. That's what NIL and the portal is. Okay, like, I know, like, you know, Deion Sanders, like, Coach Prime at Colorado, it's kind of an outlier. But but it, it's a good example. Like, Colorado was one of the worst teams in, in college football, okay, for decades, right? Ever since they won the championship, like, in the mid-'90s. They lost 11 games last year. They bring in Coach Prime, and he has a bunch of guys coming in the transfer portal. He's recruiting like crazy. He brings excitement to the program. And yeah, like early, early in the season, they were better, but like they were in the top 20 and had college game day at their stadium. Okay, like that's how quickly things can change with the transfer portal, with NIL. You can be paying guys. 
Like Arkansas has virtually, if there's one thing we have in our state is money, right? We have some of the wealthiest people in the world who live in Arkansas, right? And, and obviously, like there's one family, they own two NFL football teams, right? The Rams and the Broncos, they're owners. They're in the family. Like they care about football. Okay, we've got other big time donors who love football. Like Arkansas, and I know this from talking to other coaches. Like I talk to people, okay? Like I know coaches, like, you know, coordinators and head coaches at other programs, right? And like they tell me how sophisticated and well funded their NIL programs are. And then I see people like Pittman and Urichek, like who are clearly not on board with the NIL. Like, like, like they, they have kind of like grudgingly kicking and screaming adopted it, and they're not all in. And so if you don't have leaders, if your AD and your head football coach are not all in on the NIL and the portal, you are never going to succeed. Never. Okay, so that's the problem. That's why Urichek has to go. That's why Pittman has to go. Obviously, because of the weakness and the mental health stuff and just the bad football, I get it. But it's more so because they don't understand the revolution that has taken place inside the game of college football. So all you people out there, like fans hate the portal. They hate NIL. They still want to go back to the glory days of people just running through the A and being happy to play for the Hogs and blah, blah, blah. There's still an element of that, okay? We have a great culture in the program. Fayetteville is one of the best places to live in the entire country. Like, we can recruit to Fayetteville. But with the NIL and the portal, if we have a sophisticated operation under a great football coach, Arkansas can be a top 10 program literally overnight. That's how fast it can change. Not in five years. I'm talking about tomorrow. So as, a, as an athletic director, as an administration, in, in, the, in the current regime, just like the NFL, if you know your guy is not the guy, you make a change immediately. You don't wait. And so that, that's why we got to move on. So I also want to address why, you know, I get a lot of people on, on Twitter, on social media, when I talk about recruiting, they get really upset when I say that Arkansas is underperforming in recruiting relative to other sports. Okay, they say Arkansas didn't have in-state talent. Okay, Arkansas didn't have the kind of players that Texas does, or Louisiana, or Alabama, or Georgia, or Florida. And yes, that, that is certainly true. Like Arkansas, you know, we're a population of 3 million total. Like this, like we don't have we don't have the, the just the population or the athletes that other surrounding schools do. But guess what? Eric Musselman is not buying into that. Dave Van Horn is not buying into that. Our nationally number one a hundred championships track and field program is not buying into that. Okay, you look at the Arkansas basketball roster. Like two of our top players are from Arkansas. Maybe just one, Devo Davis. Eric Musselman just signed a top 50 player from California. We beat Kansas on the guy. He like he doesn't care about that. Musk recruits nationally. He hits the portal. He hits NIL. And he succeeds. Same with Van Horn. And same with the track and field program. Same with everyone else. But everyone thinks that football is different. Like, yeah, I, I get it. Like, it's a bigger roster. You need more players. But the NIL and the portal have changed the game. Okay, you can, you can recruit nationally by buying players. Okay, like I know, like there, I think this story is in the public domain, um, you know, but I'll tell it anyway. Like, I know a guy whose son is a, you know, uh, he's an offensive lineman for the University of Texas. Okay, he's got a six figure NIL deal and he drives a Lamborghini in Austin, Texas. The Lambo dealership in Austin gave him a lease, you know, through an NIL sponsorship. Okay, so what's a, what's a better recruiting pitch? Mental health counselors, which is what Hunter Urichek is saying. Hey, we're not going to revenue share with you. We're not going to focus on the NIL and buy your talent. Um, we're going to give you mental health counseling or a Lamborghini. Okay, I can tell you, you know, from a former high school kid who's getting recruited, you know, the Lamborghini and the six-figure NIL contract, that's a little bit more persuasive than, hey, we're going to take care of your mental health because you're broke. So, like, that's what has to happen inside the program. Like, we have to have new leadership who embraces the NIL. Obviously, coaching is a factor. Arkansas, historically, from Frank Broyles to Lou Holtz to Ken Hatfield to, to Coach Petrino, the, the formula for success at Arkansas football is having a, an authoritarian, tough-head football coach. I played under one who is an innovative offensive mind, like Petrino, and who can recruit. Okay, that's the formula. Like, all those names that I mentioned, my dad played for Holtz. He was very similar to Petrino. 
same situation. Innovative offensive mind, did very well in recruiting, had success. Okay, that's what Arkansas has to do. That's our formula. Sam Pittman does not fulfill those criteria. Again, he deserves credit for bringing us out of the abyss that was post-Chad Morris. Now the program is more attractive. We can go get a real head football coach who's a young, innovative offensive mind who's going to put together a, a, a vibrant and, and, and as well-funded as anyone's NIL program, and we can buy talent nationally. We can change Arkansas football permanently. We can be in the top 10 again, which we haven't been in 13 years or whatever since I was there. We can do this. That's why I'm saying this. Like, for all the fans out there who hate what I'm saying, I get the sense that a lot of people are, they're just, they're comfortable with losing. Okay, like, I guess, like, they, they want to wallow in self-pity. I'm not interested in that. Arkansas can return to greatness if you follow the steps that I've laid out. I don't expect everyone to agree with me. I think everyone's ready to fire Pittman, but the Eurocheck thing, people aren't on board with. But I'm telling you right now, unless we have the right athletic director who buys into this, it's not going to change from top to bottom permanently in football, which like it or not, like I know basketball's great, baseball's great. Football is the engine that drives the program. And it's been 12 years since we've been relevant in football. So if we, if we, if we, if we follow the path that I've laid out, Arkansas, we can make Arkansas great again. Okay. That's what I want to do. No one wants it more than me. And just like the, the, the Marine Corps saying, right? Like, no better friend, no worse enemy. Like, if we're doing great, I'm going to be the biggest cheerleader. But if we're doing shitty like we're doing now, I'm going to be the biggest enemy of the program. Because that's what has to happen. I can be the bad guy. I can take the... I don't care about it online. I will do this. Okay? And I, I've noticed, like, I, I give some people credit. Like, they, they've acknowledged that I was right about this. And I, I know this message is tough for some people to hear, especially fans who have never heard just because of, like, the captured... Arkansas sports media complex that is access-based and they don't want to offend anyone who they see every day. They don't want to get cut off from interviews like that happens in, in college football. So like they're not going to criticize the program. Like they're basically just fans. Listen to what I'm saying. I know it's hard. It's difficult. You've never heard it before, but just trust me. Know that I've been there. I've been on a great college team. I've been a part of the greatest franchise in NFL history under the greatest coach and the greatest quarterback. I know what I'm talking about. This is the path that we have to follow, and if we do that, make a change at the top in, in the athletic director and the head football coach, bring in young, innovative, aggressive talent that will build up NIL and buy players nationally, Arkansas will win. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. I'm going to post all this on social media. I uh, look forward to hearing some of your feedback. Um, but until next time, this is the Jake Beckett Show. See you next week.